There has to be a, a, a tender kindness and yet a, a gentle boldness that we've got to learn to approach, and that is meek. We've always taken that word meek and made it seem mousy. Meek is not being mousy. Meek is being controlled and, and kind, but forthright and truthful. We all have those moments where we need a little encouragement to get through our day. Someone to remind us that we are not alone. Find peace. Embrace joy. Seek God daily. Welcome to Jesus Calling Stories of Faith. Our guest today is Shonda Pierce, a Christian stand-up comedian who's as passionate about her faith as she is funny. Finally went on a date, I met a fella. I had my Spanx on and my lipstick. I was all in. Had his picture on my phone so I could recognize him when I saw him. Lord, that picture is like 25 years old. On May 7th and 9th, Shonda appears in theaters nationwide with the new documentary movie, Unashamed. In this film, Shonda travels across the country speaking to people who have learned how to stand up for Christ, even when doing so comes at great cost. She also shares how she herself has learned to let go of the hang-ups causing her shame, and how to tell others about her faith with both kindness and boldness. My name is Shonda Pierce. I have been a stand-up comedian for almost 26 years now, and, uh, and I love my job. Who wouldn't love to go and laugh all night, every night? <laughs> You know, the root of unashamed is ashamed, and then the root of ashamed is shame. And I have dealt with that issue before in my life, and I've learned uh, a lot of powerful lessons because of the healing of Jesus Christ and, and great therapists and counselors to help you get through maybe some victimization or some things in your life that came along that made you feel so shameful. Oh my goodness, I'm never going to be tiny and skinny again. And especially now that, you know, you think about dating again, you're like, oh my goodness. So you become very aware and ashamed of, oh, I've let myself go, you know, those types of types of things. But I'll be honest with you, and it's a hard subject for me because I, you know, you, you always, when you begin to reveal parts of yourself, you leave yourself wide open for criti criticism. But I will say that when I first started out on this journey, I was so excited uh, I loved making the body of Christ laugh. I, you know, I felt like I was, I was, you know, the the big bell of the ball at a lot of women's conferences because, you know, I was making them laugh about this and that and the other. Well, that was great. And then came along interest in my career outside of the faith-based world. A wonderful manager from Beverly Hills, California, who managed Billy Crystal and Robin Williams and a whole host of people in their firm called and said, we'd like to talk to you about your career. And I found myself, uh, when I when I engaged in, in career choices with those folks, I found myself uh, once in a while being asked to not talk about Jesus. And I remember having a conversation with these incredible, wonderful, you know, managers. And I said, what you all don't understand is, I really love him. I mean, I really, really love him. If he asked me to never be funny again, I would do it. If he asked me to move to Africa and feed starving children for the rest of my career, I, in a heartbeat, I would do it. This is what I think the world forgets that this, this thing we call relationship with Jesus, it's, it is more than just a, a Sunday morning, you know, gathering or the Easter egg hunt for the, you know, kids at church. It's, it's more than that. It is, it's, it's something that's so grafted into your heart, into your very being, that it changes your life. And so I, I, as I began to be in places where they look upon my faith or my Christianity as a weakness or uh, I'm taking it all way too serious. Uh, I, began, I, I began to feel emboldened to make a stand. Um, and I don't know that everybody 
is going to be in that situation. I do know that I have girlfriends who are bankers and school teachers, and once in a while, they are asked a question that all of a sudden they have to answer it with Christ in mind. They have to answer it with biblical principle in mind. And when they do that, it's not always acceptable and it's not always pleasing. Now I have spiritual, <laughs> I have a spiritual reason I think that happens, but I also just know that in this culture that you're really going to stand strong and boldly or you're going to get washed away with the tide. And, and I pray people choose to be strong. And, and I say this tenderly, because I've been there. I've been there when I wanted to go in and, you know, don't call me a Christian comedian, just call me a comedian, you know. So for people who are in the public eye, they have to be ready with the right answers. They have to be ready with a loving answer and a kind way of communicating that, you know. Um, so it, 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 I, I watch that and I chuckle sometimes going, you know, I don't want people to have to guess. <laughs> I think she might be a believer. She never did cuss in her routine. I, I, I don't want to have them to have to guess. I'm, I'm probably more bold and louder to go. Let me tell you right off the bat, I love Jesus. <laughs> so that's going to change what we're going to talk about tonight. You know what's interesting about what I learned when I first started hanging out with them? the comedy community, the outside of my faith-based world, um, they go to comedy clubs in Los Angeles or New York. That's where they meet, the, that's where they go look for talent, for sitcoms and stuff on television. That's where these people get their start, is coming up through comedy clubs and, and you know, that's how they see them perform. Many of the performers that now that become famous on sitcoms and everything, they had to clean them up to get them on television. I used to think, what a shame. They have to use different words and everything to get them on primetime TV. You have to clean them up a little bit for primetime TV. And I used to always want to go, I'm already cleaned up, hello, you know. But yet I couldn't get my foot in the door where those people come and find and see talent. And so I just decided a long time ago, build it and they will come. You know, I saw that in the movie too. Um, and, and so I decided I'll just do what I do, keep my head down and do hard work and perhaps someday somebody will notice. And they really haven't. <laughs> but boy, am I still absolutely pleased with the way it turned out. Yeah, you know. So my prayer is young people will see, look, you, God's word is true. He says, honor me before men and I will honor you in front of the Father. I would rather have God's approval than all the honor of man in the world. This is my third documentary now, and I'm still alive. So usually they do documentaries after you're dead and gone. So I don't know what they're gonna put out after I'm gone. Comedians are very blessed that that's what we do for a living is give our opinion. We hope we give it in a way that makes you laugh, you know. Um, and for me, I noticed that at often I would get a lot of conversation or interviews of going, so how are you a stand-up comedian and you're a born-again Christian? Or how are you that you are a stand-up comedian and you stay clean all the time? I even had an interviewer ask me, is it hard for you to sit down and write material that, you know, that do you have to kind of clean it up for your audience? <laughs> and I always chuckled going, no, it didn't come out of my mouth dirty. <laughs> You know, I, I might work on word choice here or there, but never, you know. And so I learned that in this job for 25 years and doing stand-up comedy, and primarily my audience was a faith-based audience. Um, and as my career grew, just the very nature of people finding out who you are, I would get invited more and more to things that were a little bit outside the box of my faith-based community. And when that would happen... It was very interesting to me that I almost had to apologize for my success uh, because I didn't do it the way they do it, or I don't talk the way they talk. And I almost began to happen to apologize for, yeah, well, yeah, I'm sorry, I'm, I've never really worked a lot of comedy clubs, but yeah, I'm the, you know, I'm the most awarded female comic in history. And I'm sorry I didn't do it the way you do it, you know? And you almost find yourself being very embarrassed by the hard work that you've put in. And so all of that together, I think the Lord begins to, to weave this thread through you of going, here's what I'm teaching you. 
in the middle of this. And what came very apparent to me was God was teaching me how to have gentle boldness. And, and that's hard in this culture because sometimes you get pushback that's not very gentle. But yet Jesus has required us and called us to love and, and called us to humility and called us to, to be tender and kind while we're getting yelled in our faces. I wanted to approach this movie to, with two people, two types of people in mind. Those who are so timid to tell people that they are born again Christians and that they love Jesus, um, to give them a little empowering to know that they're not alone, that he does walk before you and he walks beside you so that you, you, know, you don't have to be afraid to let your neighbor know who you believe in. Um, and then secondly, that group of people I wanted to hopefully, you know, when they see this movie, is those who have a hard time understanding how, we, how are you successful and you didn't do it like the norm is supposed to do it. And so I went, I, I, you know, intentionally went after very successful people to talk about where they are and, and a little bit of the pushback that they got. But look how God blessed them on the other side of things. Look what God did in spite of how the world was pushing back on them. And so I, I love that part of it. It's, you know, as my mother would say, you, you just got a little, that little dig in, didn't you? <laughs> what I got to do was go and interview a lot of folks who have had some pushback when their faith is challenged. And, um, and, I, and I understand that challenge. And so we, we decided to call it Unashamed. Now, you know, I don't, I don't want to make going to see Unashamed such a, you know, it's going to be a spiritual <laughs> journey. Y'all need to do this or you're not going to heaven. Um, I, I do like the fact that because of, you know, a great big giant screen and you can gather in a car with a bunch of girlfriends or your family and you can go. And especially I pray that families go and they take their teenage children and they say and they'll have an opportunity to talk about it. You know, how many times do you sit around your kitchen table and you talk to your kids about what movie they saw or what game they're playing or what went on at school. I pray that this starts a great conversation with your family and your children of going, you know, someday you might be called upon um, to, have, to have to make a stand. And I, I want you to be ready and I want you to know God will honor you. We'll be right back with more of Shonda's interview as she shares about the slow road to recovery after losing her husband and the healing that led her to begin sharing her life on film to help others, right after this brief message about a beautiful new edition of Jesus Calling. Share His Love Share his inspiration. Share his strength. Share his joy. Shonda recounts the circumstances that led her to share her story in a bigger way to help those who have been through loss and depression. She also shares how her sister introduced her to Jesus Calling as a way to get through some of the darker moments. The first documentary, let me say it this way, was Laughing in the Dark, and it was very much about my life and, and a time of depression that I went through. It was about coming out of that and, and surviving that. You know, it, it is a... It is such a beautiful thing to set in a group. I am, um, and I know this from therapy. <laughs> 
I've been to a lot of group therapy. There is something very empowering when you sit around in a group with like minds, like problems, and you say, hi, I'm Shonda, I'm clinically depressed, or hi, I'm here because I'm struggling with this or that, the other. That is so therapeutic and so beautiful. Um, when you're around and you can understand other people's problems, you find a, a common ground. Well, if that's true in therapy, it's got to be true in faith. Because iron sharpens iron, we strengthen one another, we learn that we're not alone. And then I did a movie called Enough, which was kind of the follow-up of uh, when I lost my husband and, and trying to figure out who you are at, you know, after that, when it's redefining yourself. My family went through a, a very traumatic time. Um, my my sister-in-law found was the first to find the Jesus Calling book, and she got bought everyone bought one for everybody. Uh, she was she and her husband, which was my brother at that time, were in a terrible trauma for for their marriage and for their lives. And she began to read Jesus Calling. It affected her life so much that she got on the phone. She kept tracing down, tracing down, and she wanted to get a Jesus Calling book for women who were uh, separated from their husbands and going through a horrible time. And we had started a counseling center and all of that. Somehow, some way, Sarah Young got the message and sent her like a case of Jesus Calling book. Well, she wept about that. And then, as as the as life happens, I wind up in a very deeply depressed place in my life, dealing with childhood issues and and you know the traveling and the hit the wall running. And she would call me every day and read Jesus Calling to me. And then when I went to a psychiatric hospital, the only thing I was allowed to take with me, I took my Bible and my Jesus Calling book. And it had a way of, of bringing scripture alive for you again, especially we old King James for, you know, people. <laughs> In preparation for this interview, I went upstairs to get my my first one. You know, I've got had the journal, I've had, you know, I passed mine on to people, but I went upstairs to get my first one and I was trying to figure out which one is my favorite. They're all dog-eared and written on the margin. And I opened up and the first one that came to mind was, trust me, and it, on the margin I had written, read this to David today, which was my late husband. And that was so tender to me. I can almost go through my Jesus Calling book and it's a diary and a journal of what I was going on with my kids because in the margin I've written, oh, thank you for this, Lord, today I had to go to D.C. and do this and this. You know, and it's, it's almost like you can see where I've been and what I've been doing. But it is, it, it is filled with such anointing that that every page seems to be like a, it hits me right at the right time of the right day. All right, I don't even know where to start. They're all so good, but this one I love because um, in the margin I'd written, read this to David, my late husband, who was struggling so much um, in the last few years of his life with addiction. Trust me and don't be afraid. I want you to view trials as exercises designed to develop your trust muscles. You live in the midst of a fierce spiritual battle and fear is one of Satan's favorite weapons. When you start to feel afraid, affirm your trust in me. Speak out loud if circumstances permit. Resist the devil in my name and he will slink away from you. Refresh yourself in my holy presence. Speak or sing praises to me and my face will shine radiantly upon you. Remember that there is no condemnation for those who belong to me. You have been judged not guilty for all of eternity. Trust me and don't be afraid, for I am your strength, song, and salvation. It uh, made me feel like he was sitting, be and I'm gonna cry, it made me feel like he was sitting there talking to me. The way that it's written. And, and, and in the world, in the faith-based world, we call that anointing. There was an anointing that came out of those words. And it was all on the scriptures I'd read all my life. And yet this beautiful way it, that she had written out these prayers for you, it, it was as if 
it spoke right to you. I hear the sweetness of God's love through his followers constantly. And so that alone is a great reason to, to fellowship together. And so um, the sense of community and church, all of those things are, are such needed tools in your arsenal, especially when you are gonna leave that group setting and then go back out into the world and do your job or go do what you need to do or be a mom, or, you know, to have that time to come and strengthen one another and, and, and see that you're not alone in the fight or the function. You're not, a, uh, you're not just out there, you know, being left alone. To find out how you can see Shonda's new movie, Unashamed, Coming to a theater near you on May 7th and 9th, 2019, please visit ShondaMovie.com. Next time on Jesus Calling Stories of Faith, we talk with country music legend Randy Travis and his wife, Mary. In July of 2013, the country music legend who had sold 25 million records and had 15 number one hits had a stroke that nearly took his life and for a time, his ability to speak or sing. Mary shares about how she clung to God during this time. We leaned hard on Him. We leaned real hard on God. And I know I spent a lot of nights um, over in my little hospital cot or chair or whatever was there and talking to God and saying prayers. And, you know, it was, it was a, um, there was a newness in me as far as my faith. And I always asked him, I said, God, I said, just please give him back to me. I don't care what way, shape, or form, just please let me have him back. And he was faithful. God was faithful. Thank you for watching Jesus Calling Stories of Faith. To learn more about how to keep up with our shows bi monthly and to listen to our weekly podcast, please visit youtube.com slash Jesus Calling Book to view and hear previous episodes and to watch a short informational video about how to access all things Jesus Calling on audio and video formats. Plus, learn how to subscribe to our podcast and video channels. Your subscription helps get the word out to more people who will benefit from these inspirational stories of faith.